Hello and welcome to Coffee and Candles. I literally have coffee and candles for you this morning because it is Halloween morning. Happy Halloween to all of you out there. I have a quick cold open today of four different Bath & Body Works scents. These Bath & Body Works scents are, a couple of them were released for Halloween. So I have pumpkin carving here for you. Um, and pumpkin carving, I believe has been around in their holiday line or their Halloween line rather for a very long time. Um, this is the first time that I've really smelled it or taken it home, surely. Um, I kind of took a break from Bath & Body Works for a while and have been trying out other things. So um, I walked into a white barn in Columbus, Ohio that was really, really huge and smelled everything that needs to be smelled. I brought home four different candles. Um, definitely pumpkin carving was one of them. I thought it was one of the best pumpkin scents. When I walked into Bath and Body Works, of course you're accosted by all these um, different sales associates. Um, and I was just very honest to the gal that I was talking to. I said, I am looking for a good pumpkin candle for many different reasons. I am less than impressed with Yankee Candle of recently. I'm a recovering Yankee Candle person. And I've decided not to do the spiced um, pumpkin slash pumpkin apple, which is also a great scent this year because I feel as though it's like playing Russian roulette. Um, will the Yankee Candle that I buy this time around have scent? Will it have throw? Will it not? And I'm, I'm just over it. I'm not doing it anymore. They're not um, cheap enough for that kind of nonsense. So I told the person at Bath & Body Works, I'm looking for a pumpkin, and I think she brought me every single pumpkin candle in the entire store. I smelled all of them, and I was very honest with her. Most of them were no's, um, but a couple of them were yeses, and I went ahead and bought four candles. So here's our first pumpkin carving. I'm gonna get into that in a second. This is um, a three wick, and it's a beautiful orange harvest color. Um, and then in their regular line, I also have here um, Pumpkin Bonfire, which was an absolute yes. Um, and as you can see, it has some rose copper notes there. And then I have two from their special white barn. I believe it's called their Naturals line. And I, I, I think I heard somewhere that this may have actually come out in the spring or summer with different shades, different labels, etc. cetera. Um, for my money though, I could see how this is really coming into its own here in the fall, aesthetically and also in terms of scent. So I've got one of these, this is spiced pumpkin patchouli. Um, and then one that was not pumpkin, here's our wild card for the day. This is um, coffee and whiskey. And for the naturals lines, we just have um, regular white wax there. Um, all three um, wick candles for today. So without much ado, let's start because it is Halloween morning with pumpkin carving, which as I said, I believe is a standing um, fixture in the Halloween line for um, Bath and Body Works. And obviously it was available in a lot of different formats, three wick, two wick, one wick, whatever. Um, in terms of the look, like I said, the orange color is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous in terms of just that automatic um, visual appeal. I do think that the label is adequate. I could imagine it being much worse. Could I imagine it being better? Maybe. It's got a little bit of a holographic, as I swirl the um, candle there, you can kind of catch it um, with the pumpkins and they look kind of spooky with those little skeleton like heads. So I would say generally speaking, a really nice label. It does have some like raised texture there. Look at this lid though. How great is that lid? So this lid, if you can tell, it has um, some spiders, it has some bats. To be honest, I didn't even notice those. I Mostly I just saw the vines and I think that's what you're gonna pick up mostly is that raised vine-like texture. Really nice lid. Okay, so pumpkin carving. Ugh. That's a nice scent. Pumpkin carving is, it's sweet. It's sweet, but it's not overly sweet. Um, and I'm definitely getting, I'm getting some spice automatically right off. And I'm also getting something which is, 
um, fresh vegetal, possibly pumpkin, etc. Yeah, that's really nice. So um, I have the 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 notes here from the company. The 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 notes that the company has given is freshly carved pumpkin, spiced pumpkin seeds, and smooth brown sugar. I I don't know where the seeds are coming from. And to be honest, this is kind of um, I've noticed that Bath and Body Works likes to have a poetic moment when they list their notes. It's not, they're not content to just list the notes. It has to be like a moment, like, you know, a touch of this, a splash of that, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And often I think that the notes are just listed in the order of um, what sounds good from a verbal poetic aesthetic standpoint rather than what's actually accurate, what's in the jar or what um, actually makes sense in terms of the notes that you're smelling. I don't even know if those are top, middle or base to be perfectly honest. Forget the seeds. I'm not really sure where the seeds are at all, but I am getting spice. It's a very soft, spice though and i want to say that it's a little bit of cinnamon and a little bit of clove and i know that those two spices are pronounced sharp bitey but it is a real soft cinnamon clove it's really nice it's like an aura a little bit of an aura it's a uh, like an after baking aura maybe where it's not bitey right out of the spice jar it's something that's kind of hanging and has had some nuance in terms of its mixture and then I do detect something that is warm and fruity or vegetal. And I, I, I actually wanna leave, lean, lean fruity on this. I know that they're asking us to smell pumpkin here, but for my money, I actually smell, it's not quite apple, but it could be something like pear, to be honest. Um, and the, the cinnamon clove, um, the cinnamon clove, and it's not just the base notes here, they say are possibly, allegedly brown sugar. And for me, it could almost be um, something um, a little bit more, just a touch gourmand. Could be a little bit of vanilla, could be a little bit of bourbon, could be a little bit of, um, I don't know, nutmeg even. We're talking like a, a deep kind of rich caramel undertone here. But those mid notes that are, that and, and they are responsible for that vegetal fruit. To be honest, I'm feeling more, a little bit juicier like a pear. But given the cinnamon clove and then the bourbon on the end of it, it is giving you the illusion of pumpkin, in my opinion. It's the illusion of pumpkin because we just don't associate pear with that range of spices, overtones and undertones. It's gorgeous. Yes, it is. You could take it as a pumpkin, um, but whatever it is, it's a beautiful, beautiful scent. And it's fairly robust, but like I said, it is an aura. It is kind of a cloud hanger, which is to say that the the all of the scent elements here are blended in such a way that um, you just kind of get a sense more than discerning absolute, uh, discerning various different discrete elements in it. Really, really gorgeous. Highly recommend this as a nice pumpkin spice-ish fragrance. So we're gonna go right from this into, happy Halloween. We're gonna go right into this, into um, pumpkin bonfire here. And um, this is a completely white candle. Um, and I really love all of the hints here of copper, of rose gold-ish copper. As you can see, the label has some hints of it around the sides and kind of when you swoop it around, um, you pick up those little metallic elements. Gorgeous lid. Yes. Yes, I am living for this lid. I almost feel as though I need to just Kind of keep the lid. So this is pumpkin bonfire. It's a real sunny golden kind of feel that they're after. Again, I would call this an adequate presentation because although there are really knockout elements like the lid, I feel like they could have done more with this and I'm not exactly sure what that more is. At any rate, 
pumpkin bonfire. Okay, wow. So of all of the four candles that we're doing today, this is definitely the most robust. And I, let me paint this picture for you. This girl at Bath and Body Works has brought me about 73 candles. No joke. Every single pumpkin-ish candle in the store she has brought to me, okay? And I'm going around at my own pace too. And I'm not gonna lie, most of them are no's for me. They're just no's. Um, and a couple of them are, hell no, please, I never wanna smell that again. Um, this was quite literally the last candle that she brought me. And it was all by itself. It was all by itself, one little lonesome candle. And um, she brought it to me and there was like a lot of, she had no confidence. I could tell she was bringing me this candle with app, without any confidence at all. And she was just kind of like, this one, you know. Um, and the fact that it was all off by itself makes me think that um, they got very few in the store, to be perfectly honest. Um, if there had been only one in the store because they had all sold, I don't think she would have come with that kind of lack of confidence. So this was definitely not, um, a, she did not think this was going to be a strong contender. I opened the lid and I was like, yes. Yes, this was one of the only yeses I gave her the entire day. But the minute that I lifted the lid and smelled it, I said, yes, this is worth all of the other candles in the store. And frankly, it is my favorite of all of the four that are here. Although I do love these four for all their different reasons. So smelling it, this is a masculine scent, but I mean that in the best possible way, okay? Um, it's not cologne -y, it's not heavy, um, it's not pushy, it's not overly aggressive, um, although it is a very, very robust smell. Um, so well balanced, but it is masculine. And for me, for me, I'm smelling sandalwood um, or something woody right off the top, but I wanna say sandalwood. And maybe that's because the other spices um, and scents that come alongside it are very warm, um, reminiscent of like tonka or sandalwood, which is why I'm saying sandalwood, but it could just be a straight up like cedar or something like that that is combined with all like a tonka or an amber or something like that. But it is the first smell that you smell. I mean, it is that strong, woody, I wanna say sandalwood. Then on top of that, I smell amber, if it's not sandalwood, um, and then you get the spices, clove, nutmeg, and then you get something like caramel or brown sugar. Oh gosh, this is so incredible. It's really incredible. All right, so the scent notes though that Bath and Body Works has given us on this particular candle um, is white pumpkin, clove buds, and glowing embers. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't know what the difference is between white pumpkin and orange pumpkin in terms of scents. I mean, I have seen white pumpkins before, but do they smell differently than, than orange pumpkins? Maybe white pumpkins are more subtle. And so maybe when, when a candle maker says white pumpkin, they're trying to invoke something more subtle, something more sweet, I'm not really sure per my earlier bit of conversation, Bath and Body Works plays pretty fast and loose with these kinds of descriptions. I'm not gonna lie to you. I am not getting a ton of pumpkin in this candle. I would say that it is pumpkin adjacent. It is the illusion of pumpkin. They also say clove buds and the clove may be there, but it is not by me. It is, I'm really getting more, as I said, warm tonka, sandal, maybe nutmeg even, before I'm getting clove. Um, there is something vaguely spicy. I don't know that I would immediately say that it's clove. Um, in terms of the glowing embers, I'm not really sure. Like I said, there is a strong wood smell. And so that is that alludes to some sort of like fire possibly. Other than that, I'm not really sure that I'm getting smoke from it per se. Um, so yeah, I would say that this candle is an aura again, but it is a much more masculine aura 
than um, pumpkin carving. Pumpkin carving is a little bit on the sweeter side. This one is not so sweet, except for the sweetness that you would get in something like tonka or sandalwood, etc. Those are my scents. So I am all over it. And I think that tonka, sandalwood, amber, these kinds of things really round out a masculine scent and give it a softness and a warmth that otherwise makes it harsh, assertive, and leaning more toward cologne-like situations. And I mean, that warm amber is, is, it's perfect for the warmth that they're trying to evoke here and in kind of a harvest-like candle. But to be honest, if it wasn't called pumpkin bonfire, if it was called something else, would I immediately think pumpkin? And would I immediately think a fire? Maybe not. Fantastic scent. You don't want to miss this. Um, if you know Sean from Hearthside, he really liked this candle, um, allegedly, but he did suggest that he thought it was not a mainline scent, i.e. that um, there's a certain niche of people, obviously I'm included, who love this kind of candle, um, but not enough for it to be a big seller, which is why perhaps there was only one sad one in the store and the Bath & Body Works sales clerk was not very confident about recommending it. If you're into those kinds of scents, you've got to pick it up. All right, so let's go to um, a pumpkin scent here in the Naturals line. And for me, this is the most pumpkin forward of all of the four candles um, that I've talked about. So these, these top two, I love them for all kinds of other reasons. I don't know that I'm detecting, detecting a strong, um, authentic or fresh pumpkin coming forward. This particular candle though, I think I would identify as pumpkin if I was just smelling it without even knowing what the name of it was. So this is Spiced Pumpkin and Patchouli, which as I said earlier, is in their Naturals line. Um, I love these labels. And I know for some people, they may seem a little bit cold, a little bit modern, a little bit, I don't know, industrial or whatever else looking. I mean, they are definitely not um, a classic Bath & Body Works aesthetic. Um, these are made to look more hipster. They're made to look more high end and man, they do. They really do. Um, if these indeed did come out in the summer, in the spring, in a different color and whatever else, um, they may not have landed the same way. But for me, these earthy tones, these like neutrals, oh gosh, with the, with these kind of I don't know even what color you would call these lids. Um, it just lands. I can tell that it's landing with this particular scent line, this particular collection here in the harvest. Um, they've got obviously a very subtle label here. Um, and the typeface is meant to look like it's been punched out on a typewriter, you know, of course. I don't know if you can tell, but the label is a little bit raised and I just think it's an incredible aesthetic. There are people out there who have spaces that just call out for this kind of a candle. And this is, it's just a great contribution for Bath & Body Works, even if it's not their like mainline look. Um, okay, so this is White Barn Spiced Pumpkin Patchouli. Gosh, I'm loving it. And I am getting pumpkin forward. I really am. Uh, um, I'm also getting that for me, the top notes are cinnamon and clove spice, but as with the pumpkin carving, super soft, super soft. And they just kind of hang over the top without being in your face or overwhelming the other scents. And I would say that it's a very strong mid of pumpkin or some sort of warm, it could even be a butternut squash, it could be a sweet potato, something like that. It's like a yellow harvest fruit slash vegetable, and it could definitely be pumpkin, you know. Yes, um, and I, I am picking up like maybe a touch of tonka bean, possibly. Um, in the bottom, in the bottom, I'm getting something earthy, warm, um, something earthy, warm, maybe a little bit dark, a little bit vaguely spicy. And I think that has to be the patchouli. But if you're not a patchouli fan, 
I, I still think you're gonna like this because for me, the patchouli is not coming forward. It is, if anything, it's kind of grounding it and providing a little bit of earthiness and depth, but it's not something that you would necessarily pick up. And if you just smelled this candle without seeing the um, label on it, would you even know that it was patchouli? I don't know. Please don't be scared off by that. I would say the dominant scent here is that mid orange yellow vegetable um, and with the spices that are kind of enveloping it. It is a very subtle scent though. And it kind of goes with this aesthetic, which if I could name it, it's like a faded hipster vibe, you know? Um, not as robust as the other two candles that I just opened up for sure. And so I am a little worried about the throw on this. It is a sophisticated pumpkin scent, but I'm worried that it may not be able to fill a very large space. So we'll have to see once I actually burn it. I'm just going to end here by giving the scent notes that, um, um, uh, Bath and Body Grease gave us, which is rich pumpkin, warm patchouli, touch of cinnamon sugar. So definitely the, some, the cinnamon, um, I think those are the top notes. Um, and the pumpkin, which is a strong mid, like we're talking um, high notes and low notes are just kind of bookending what I think is a very strong mid scent. Um, and don't worry about the patchouli. All right, so let's just finish up then with coffee and whiskey. Here's coffee and whiskey. We've got it again in that um, nice naturals line. Um, I love coffee and whiskey, honestly. Gosh, I hate to rank these four candles, but if I had to, I think pumpkin bonfire, and then this would be a very close second, although I do love pumpkin carving, and also spiced pumpkin patchouli. Oh gosh. All right, so this is a more robust scent in the Naturals line, which all of them tended to lean a little bit more subtle, especially when you're smelling them in the Bath and Body Works environment. Um, the uh, Pumpkin Bonfire and the um, Pumpkin Carving are definitely your most robust of the four here, but this fits well. I mean, it's, it's following those two in terms of robustness. Okay, so this is one of those situations where the, the scents that Bath & Body Works are wanting us to smell are just like nowhere near what you're actually smelling um, in the jar itself. So shake your head like an Etch-A-Sketch with the whole coffee whiskey thing. Um, for me, when I immediately smell this, I am smelling, honestly, sandalwood amber again, to be honest. It is, it does lean masculine. It's just not as robust and forward as like pumpkin bonfire where it's like whoosh, right up in there. Um, this is a faded sandalwood amber kind of scent. And I'm getting maybe possibly a faint cocoa or cocoa bean after smell. So on the end of it, it's not a sweet scent except for the sweetness that you would get from sandalwood or amber. And then on the end of it, you're getting something vaguely nutty, and I wanna say kind of cocoa-like, to be honest, which is grounding it, for sure. Yeah, I would say very few scents. Can you believe it? Here are the scents that Bath & Body Works gives us. Bold Irish Whiskey. Bold, mind you, bold. Bold Irish Whiskey. Splash of vanilla. Hint of coffee. And I mean, Irish whiskey and then splash of vanilla. So we're talking not like vanilla beans here or something dried. We're talking about like vanilla extract, right? That's what they want to invoke with the splash of whiskey. So between the vanilla extract and the whiskey, you should have a strong boozy smell here. And there is no booze at all. If anything, this is actually a very dry, kind of scent. There's nothing wet about it at all. And they want us to conjure up whiskey, vanilla, and coffee, all three of which are like liquid and I, it's just bizarre to me. It's bizarre to me. Um, I think the hint of coffee is like I said, that kind of nutty um, cocoa bean that I'm scenting at the end, but again, it's dry. It's a bean and it's kind of roasty, right? Um, Otherwise, I'm just getting sandalwood and amber. I'm not getting Irish whiskey or vanilla. 
that said, it's an amazing candle. It's amazing because you know I love sandalwood and amber. So done, like where do I sign? And then it has that like nuttiness of cocoa. I'm not sure that it's even like coffee necessarily, um, but they're probably similar in terms of the way that they would feel, smell um, in that kind of unground state. It's warm, it's a little bit sweet, it's soft, it's masculine. Um, it's faded a little bit, um, and it is like oddly unexpected. If I had to, if I had to guess why it is that they've gone with coffee whiskey and so boldly asked us to smell these scents that are obviously not there, the only way that I can defend it is that coffee and whiskey, um, without smelling it, invokes a certain kind of masculine sensibility. It's like a faded jeans wearing male with a mountain man beard who loves culture and reading and thinking and has like a library with wood accents and crystal decanters and you know tumblers for whiskey etc et et so it's like it's a mood it's a masculine mood but if you're actually looking for those scent notes they're not here um, definitely a stronger and more robust scent than spiced pumpkin patchouli. So once again, we've got coffee, whiskey, um, spiced pumpkin patchouli. I'm worried about the throw on these, but I won't know more until I burn them. Great scents, especially more worried about this one. And then we also had the much stronger, um, pumpkin bonfire, which I highly recommend. Please let it come back. Please, 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 please. And pumpkin carving, which almost certainly will be back in Bath and Body Works next year for Halloween. So don't worry about that one. Thank you so much for joining me today. Like, subscribe. I will see you later.